Do you like star quilt blocks? Well, today I'm going to show you how to do this fun variation of a friendship star. Welcome to Evita Studio. My name is Elizabeth and I help you make beautiful things with quilting, pojagi, and embroidery. And today I'm going to show you how to make this inside friendship star. And the reason why I call it inside is because the star doesn't go all the way to the edge of the block. It's just in the middle of the block. This can be beneficial if you want to make a quilt with stars, but you want to have spaces in between the stars. So they're more spread out on the quilt top. And this is a good way to do that without adding sashing in between the blocks. Also, if you have trouble with getting your seam allowances exact and your blocks are different sizes, this type of block is much easier to be able to trim down to size. Because even though this is a 12 and a half inch block, we could trim it down to 12 and a quarter, even 12 or 11 and a half inch block, and we wouldn't lose any of the star in the middle. This variation also leaves a lot of background and negative space around the star. And that is nice if you like to embellish with quilting designs or embroidery or applique. It gives you a lot of places to work with and add these embellishments. I've done that with this variation. I added a little bit of embroidery and I'll show you more details about this later. So to make the inside Friendship Star quilt block, you're going to need five three and a half inch squares of whatever color you want your star to be. So this is the star fabric. Then you're going to need four three and a half by five inch pieces of background fabric and four five inch pieces of background fabric. So to begin, we're going to take one of these uh, star fabrics and set it to one side. We're saving that for something else putting the large squares aside. Then on these four star fabric squares, we're going to mark a line from corner to corner. And you can mark this however you want. I'm going to be using a water soluble marker for that. Now we're going to put one of these squares with one of these rectangles. We're going to place it on the end and then stitch right on that line that we've drawn. Now it doesn't really matter which direction you have the uh, stitch line going, if it's going in this direction or in this direction, but each of these pieces needs to be the same. So just pick one direction and stick with it. Now we are doing this with what is commonly called the stitch and flip method. So if you want to make bonus half square triangles from this, you can check my other video that has how to make bonus half square triangles. So I'm not including that here, but that's a great option. So we're going to put these all together and then stitch along the line. So once these have all been stitched, we're just going to cut about a quarter of an inch away from that stitching line. And you can use either a rotary cutter or scissors. It doesn't matter at this point because the seam is already done. So the seam allowance doesn't have to be 100% accurate. So now we're going to take this to the ironing board and press that open and you'll see that we have a rectangle with a triangle just on one corner. Now these pieces are done. We can lay out these pieces to make our block. So the fifth square that we have with our star fabric, that is going to be the center of the block. And then these other pieces that we've just made, they're going to go at north, south, east, and west, and we'll check the orientation. So we'll see that these two are, lines are parallel and those two lines are parallel. 
And another double check to make sure everything's in the right direction is to make sure that there are no right angles in our star fabric. So if all of your uh, rectangle pieces were stitched in the same orientation, there shouldn't be any problem because we won't be able to get it backwards. So it should all line up. So if there's a problem where you have, um, if there's a problem where you have one uh, point of the star that is pointing in the other direction, then to fix that, you will have to redo the uh, rectangle point. And then the corners are just these background squares. So now that this is laid out and we can see that it's gonna look good, we're just gonna join this like we would join a nine patch block. So we'll just join these into rows and then join the rows together using a quarter inch seam allowance. So when the rows have been stitched together, a quick tip about pressing is if you press the rows away from the triangles. So that means in the top and bottom row, it's gonna be pressed to the background squares. And in the middle row, it's gonna be pressed to the inside square. And I know that in this situation, that might be pressing to the light side and not the dark side, depending on your colors. But that will just help everything to line up because when you go to join the low, the, because when you go to join the rows together, you can see that these seams are now nested. You'll be able to feel with your fingers that they're lining up properly. And also it means that in this pressing, if this was pressed toward that triangle, then you would have a little bump here in the seam because there's a lot of layers of fabric that are all stacked on top of each other. But pressing it away means there are still layers of fabric, but it's not as many. So it won't be as much of a bump there. So that's a little tip for pressing and that will help your rows go together easily. So there's our finished block. And we can see that the block is 12 and a half inches even though the star is only nine inches. So have fun with this variation of a friendship star block and using it in your next quilt projects. If you like embroidery, you can see this version of a friendship star that I've done that has embroidered embellishments on the corners. This is called Loving Friends and you can get the whole pattern that includes the construction of the block and the embroidery of the hearts and flowers with it, by clicking on the link below. For ideas and inspiration for more quilting and embroidery projects, be sure to check out evadistudio.com.